Welcome back to Froggy and Doggy Land. Yes, the Froggy and Doggy Show. Um, Froggy, Professor Frog, and Dr. Dog are here again to help us learn our geometry. You notice that they're wearing capes. That's because they're superheroes. Yay! See capes. Capes, capes, yes. So, our superheroes, Frog and Dog, will help us get through. At least I think they will. Anyway, it'll kind of be fun. Well, when last we met, oh wait, we didn't meet when last we met. You're right, dog, we did not meet. What did happen? Oops, we all went away and didn't come back so that we'd be safe and healthy. Well, when we left, we needed to take a test. We're still going to take a test. It's going to be a kind of a different test. Here is the instructions for how we're going to do it. Everybody's going to do their own. It's going to be on the hub. Everybody needs to come up with five test questions. You're going to write the test. The test is a question. And the one who has the best one, I promise you, I, this will be next year's test and next year's test, and I will credit you. Miss So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so wrote this question, did a really good job, so now it's on the test for next year for the kids for the kids for next year. Okay, first thing you're going to do is choose five of the seven sections in the book. You're saying, uh, the seven sections, what's that? Well, a couple of ways you can know what the seven sections are. Um, one is you can look in your cipher at the opening page, the checklist, opening checklist page that we do at the start of every unit. It has them listed as a topic of what's in there. Uh, you can tell from that by looking in your notes what's in it. Or if you have your book with you, remember, I told you to take your book home, that it would be good. Here's chapter 10. This is page 648. And the light shining on it. Let's see. There we go. It, has, it gives a little description there of what the 10 sections are. And then you can look through the book and see which things are where so that you'll know how to put it. Okay? So that's how you can find out which one is which. Now, each question needs to be primarily on one section. Now, does that mean, no, no, we all, you've done enough geometry already. You know that it's going to be stuff from all over the place in your, in your answer or how you show that it's the correct one or if you're proving something, what you're proving, it's going to come from all over. But the primary focus of the question needs to be in one, from one of the, ten, of the seven sections of Chapter 10. You need to determine which one you want. Pick five, uh, skip two. If you want to do all seven, I'll take the best five. That's okay, too. Okay, you're going to write one question using the concepts from each of the five sections. That'll be five questions, each from a different section of the textbook. Each question is to have four possible answer choices. You can't use none of the above, A and B but not C, none of that, okay? Just four straight out answer possibilities. They all must be plausibly incorrect. That means if you are working through it in you made some error, you'd get that answer. So that it's not just like, oh, today I like the number 27. I think I'll put 27 for the answer choice. No, 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 no. They all have to be plausible uh, answer choices that someone would get if they did the problem a way that's predictably wrong. For the correct answer choice, you're to explain in detail why it's correct. For each of the three incorrect answer choices, you're to explain in detail why someone might have chosen it based on your, que your question and as they were working it. Now, for each answer choice, you've got to give so side su supporting reasons, theorems, constructions, calculations, whatever. You've got to explain all the calculations. It must be explained in words, using good grammar, maybe some subjects and verbs, maybe a preposition or article, some good things, yeah, an adjective. Wow, an adjective. Froggy wants an adjective. I'm going to post this video so that you can see it if that will help you. Now this is important, it's all important, but you're, it's not going to work if you don't do this. You won't get anything. Your test questions and answers must be in the Word document provided on the Hub. You may not make an attachment for it. You can either type it directly into the Word document that I'll place on the Hub, or you can type it someplace else, cut and paste it into it. No images, no PDFs, no attachments, none of that. It's got to be typed into it, either with your hand typing it initially or typed someplace else and cut and paste it in. That will work. Okay, if you're going to have a diagram in it, you have to describe it so that someone can draw the diagram. Now, if you do that, 
it's perfectly fine for you to also attach a, an image file of the diagram, but it has to be described so that someone can draw it without the image file. But I'd kind of like to see the image if you're going to put it in there. Okay, if you can't do it without a drawn diagram, oh, that's made that's Maisie. She's the girl who had was has been so sick. Doesn't she sound healthy? Hear that nice strong bark? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's Ollie. He's the other dog. He just ran back outside. Okay. Um, Maisie, Maisie, shh, good girl, good girl. Okay, please be aware that uh, you will be checked by, for plagiarism. Don't worry about that. Just make it your own work, and then it's not. You're all capable. Just do it and do it right. It will actually be kind of fun. If you'll get into it, it'll be fun. Okay, here's what the answer document will look like on the test. This will be posted on the Hub, and this is what you type into or cut and paste into. No images, no nothing. It's got to be typed in at the appropriate place. So say the first one you're going to do is going to be from 10.2. So you'll put a, type in a 2 here, type in the question in this area, the answer choice, and the explanation. This will, of course, expand as you hit Enter and gives you more lines. You can make it as big as you need to to uh, properly represent what you need. Okay, I'll give you an example of what it might be. What look might might bleh, excuse me. What it might look like to have this. So here's a uh, a sample problem. Go ahead and read the problem. You have seen this problem before, by the way. Okay. So three of these answers are plausible wrong answers, and one is the correct answer. Let's look at choice A first. A reflection in the line y equals x. That would be this line here. Does that make sense? Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Something's on one side, something's on the other. Isn't that what a reflection is? Yeah, a little bit. So if you made the mistake that you didn't know all the particulars about a reflection, you might call this a reflection. Here's where I've typed out what that might look like. This would be a reasonable answer to it. So, um, let's see. A student who chose this answer may have correctly noticed that the original or pre-image and copy image are directly across the line. So that's the mistake they made. Okay. However, the copy is not a reflection because it was not flipped or reflected. Corresponding points are not directly across from one another. For example, the line segment B, B prime, which would go right like this, is not perpendicular to the purported mirror line, which means it can't be a reflection. You'll recall that theorem that the mirror line and the line connecting the corresponding points will be perpendicular. So that way you know it's not. There are other reasons, but that one works and that's enough. The second choice here was that it would be um, a rotation about the point 1, negative 1. That's also plausible. You would choose that if you didn't notice some things about it. A student who chose this answer may have correctly noticed that the image was not clipped or reflected. Only its orientation has changed. It is rotated. However, in a rotation, the center of rotation will be equidistant from the corresponding point. If the center of rotation is at one, negative 1, 1, it would be about the square root of 2 units from it. And if the Wrong. That's the square root of 2. Okay. And that's... Oh, I did that wrong. <laughs> that's by 2. Oh, that's by 4, so that's by 2. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, it is right. So it is negative 1. Yeah, it would be right there. Sorry. Had a little trouble there. I just made this one up. Okay, so that would be where the rotation would be negative 1, 1, which is square root of 2 from C, but 3 times the square root of 2 point from C prime. So it's not equidistant, so it's not the center of it. It is a rotation, so a person that did this would notice that it's a rotation, but did not notice that the uh, center of rotation was given incorrectly. The next one is the correct one. Okay. 
It is uh, a rotation. It is not a reflection. And it is equidistant. If you check each one of the vertices or any point along the line, you'll find that they are equidistant and that it is perpendicular to the um, line of reflection. That is the correct answer. The last one was... Um, answer D. It's a translation right to unit and down to unit. So... Someone's looking here and attempting to see, well, it does slide over, it does slide down. Actually, it slides over four, because that's four. And it slides down four, but hey, they might not have noticed that either. Since uh, it's, it is not actually true for it, I wrote that wrong. Okay, it's down four. Okay. Isn't that it? One, two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three, four. So that's the mistake that someone would make if they were doing that one. I'll correct that before I post it on the website. Sorry about that. Okay. Here's another problem. It shows a little more calculations into it. In the figure shown, what's the length of BC? Now then, if you were going to use something like this, you would want to use a less a complex diagram so that you just could describe it. You'd want it to just be a triangle with a line going through and then label them. Okay. You just want it to be the face. You just do it this way have the line going through and then label it. You could describe that well enough to be able to use it for a question. Uh, trying to do it, you could also do it as a face of a pyramid and you just have to have, be good at your words, which a lot of you are good at words, so that would be fine too. Okay, what's the length of BC? That's the base of the triangle right there. The first response was 9. And that's wrong. And uh, coming up with 9, I say, oh, I look at that, and it looks equilateral to me. And everybody knows, oh, doggy, doggy is telling me. Everybody does not know, know that it looks like it is not good enough. can't see that very good in the light. Okay, it looks like maybe it might be re uh, equilateral because of perspective or something, and so the third side must also be 9, 6.3. <laughs> oh, no, no, not even close. Okay, the next one, 9 times the square root of 2. You might say, well, you know, seems like the answer to everything, almost, is either the Pythagorean theorem or because it's round. Let's go for it. It's not round, I'm sure, uh, even though the diagram would be, you know, that's not round. So it must be the Pythagorean theorem. So that must be my triangle. That side's 9. That side's 9. That must be the hypotenuse. Go ahead and figure it out. Come up with 9 times the square root of 2, and it's wrong. Okay. The next one, 10 units. How could someone plausibly say that the length of the base of the triangle, x, would be 10 units? Okay. Well, if you look at it and you don't look closely enough, you say, well, that looks like the mid-segment. You know what? And I'm so proud of myself. I remember that the mid-segment is half of the length of the, par the side that's parallel to it. So it must be 10. Mark 10. Be done. Wrong. So again, here's an explanation that would work for you. Okay. Then the last one here, answer choice D. <coughs> this is going to be the correct answer. Um, these form similar triangles and the corresponding parts of similar triangles are proportionate, you come out with 15. Okay, hopefully this gives you an idea of how to get started with your problems so that you can come up with some really good things. And I'm looking forward to seeing how y'all do them. <coughs> You've probably heard we're going to work out some ways so we can talk from time to time. And for right now, Froggy and Doggy Show will sign off. Bye-bye.